Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. May I invite you to be seated throughout the show. Welcome to Holy Trinity for our celebration this morning. Next week we will be at Windsor Parish Church as we celebrate their patronal feast of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. Next, well this coming Friday we will be celebrating Messy Church with the theme of St. John the Baptist. And this morning coffee will be served so do stay behind those who are able to for that coffee and for time of fellowship. May I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn, Be Thou My
gets all of them truly repent, have mercy upon you. Father, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the second reading is taken from the second letter to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before that judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that no one has died for all. Therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that all who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died, and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. This is the word of the Lord. He also said, 
With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The text from the Epistle, we walk by faith, not by sight. We all know the magnificence of Lebanon cedars, so it is easy to understand their significance in the ancient Near East. Since they were so tall and wide canopy, they could stand as an image of great kings or empires, as this passage from another part of the book of Ezekiel uh, illustrates all the birds of the air made their nest in its boughs, under its branches all the animals of the field gave birth to their young, and in its shade all great nations lived. It's a vision of the peaceful harmony of nature and mankind under the sovereignty of an earthly king. Now in chapter 17 of Ezekiel, from which today's Old Testament reading is taken, the image of the cedar is used by Ezekiel to describe the political and military activities of the kingdoms of Assyria, Egypt and Judah before the exile, as the realities of practical life come into play. But then in our reading at the end of that chapter, the image is adapted to create a vision of expected restoration. God's power is shown as he takes springs from the top of a cedar and plants it on a high mountain to grow as a new cedar which will bear fruit and provide shelter for the birds. And all trees of the field, a symbol for all the peoples of the earth, will then know that the Lord is God. His power can bring them high down to low and make the dry flourish. And there we may see the background to the parable of the mustard seed. A small seed grows up into a large shrub and the birds nest in it. But now the Gospel says, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. God's power can be hidden, but it will bring a great result from small beginnings. And meanwhile, in the first parable that we heard in the Gospel reading, the kingdom of God is compared to the hidden growth of scattered seed until it is time to harvest. Parable means comparison a laying of one idea alongside another. It's not necessarily a story, although of course there are great stories in the New Testament which we also call parables. But in the case of our Gospel reading today, we have comparison, possibly even riddle. The Kingdom of God is like. The, Lord, the Lord's initial preaching was, repent, the Kingdom of Heaven, the Kingdom of God, has drawn near. In these two parables, the hidden growth invited patience, but certainly not passivity, as St. Paul will show us. But what is the kingdom of God? Is it something realizable in the here and now, our empirical world? Throughout history, distant and recent, various political arrangements have been claimed to be the kingdom of God and sometimes sectarian groups have isolated themselves in a similar claim. But when you look, there is always repressive power involved through the coercion of state power or psychological domination by some sort of charlatan. Such occurrences simply provide more examples of how power tends to corrupt. 
Yet we pray in words our Lord has given us, Thy kingdom come. We look for a realization of God's will in the life of the world. It does seem as if the understanding of the kingdom of God in the New Testament and the early church was multifaceted. For instance, parts of the New Testament tradition expect a cataclysmic end of the current world order, when God would reign and the kingdom of God be then established. There were cataclysms, certainly, but not the wholesale end of the world order. On the other hand, there are warnings in the New Testament against trying to calculate when the end of the age will be, balanced against the medical exhortations to keep awake. And in the same, in Luke's Gospel, the Lord says, the kingdom of God is within you or among you. In political life, a kingdom is a region with a head to whom allegiance is owed. So perhaps we might better use the term kingdom of God as denoting the sphere of God's claim on our allegiance. The question then is, how do we live our daily lives in the consciousness of adorning the hidden kingdom for which we pray? Now there are parts of St. Paul's teachings which expect some sort of cataclysmic end to the current order and the triumph of God over all evil. Yet in his life, he shows us how he had to get on in the meantime with the implications of his own call to serve God and proclaim the gospel of the crucified and risen Christ. He had opponents and enemies. The Corinthian correspondence is full of examples. The New Testament church was certainly not all sweetness and light. Just one example. He writes earlier in the second letter to the Corinthians, I made up my mind not to make you another painful visit. I wrote as I did, so that when I came I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice. I wrote to you out of much distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love I have for you. The context of our reading from the second letter to the Corinthians this morning is that of opposition he encountered from certain members of the Corinthian church. Paul is clear that he is not speaking from self-aggrandizement, nor from claims to some sort of religious ecstasy as making him superior. Rather, he says, the location of salvation is the love of Christ urging us on. Is that Christ's love of us, or our love of Christ, one might wonder? It could be each Christ's perfect love for us on the one hand, our love for Christ, hesitant, incipient, on the other. For the verse goes on to say that we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. God's love is shown in Christ, and we must live for Christ. And then Paul talks of no longer regarding anyone from a human point of view, literally according to the flesh. This seems to me, in a quite difficult passage, that in some way former understandings are transcended. We once knew Christ from a human point of view, he says, but now no longer. Think how Paul's own view of Jesus had changed from the historical Jesus of Nazareth to the crucified risen Lord proclaimed in the Gospel. That change must also apply to those who have known Jesus in his earthly ministry, for now the task will be to collect and transmit the traditions of what he taught in the new situation. But there seems to be more, for we are caught in attention, which Paul calls being at home in the body, but away from the Lord. Yet home or away, he says, we make it our aim to please Christ. For if anyone is in Christ, that is a new act of creation. Everything has become new. Paul shows us we must use our lives as the gift they are, seeking to enable the kingdom of God, the sphere of God's claim on us and all mankind, in a kingdom of love and peace. We pray that God's kingdom may come, even though we do not know how. We walk by faith, not 
by sight. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
David, Nick White, and their loved ones. And in a moment of quiet, those we know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of everlasting life, we commend to you those who have recently passed away or whose anniversaries fall at this time. We pray for those who mourn. This morning we remember Dennis Spears, David Wilkie, Doreen Dyson, and those who are known to us. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I publish the bands of marriage between Thomas James Orr of this parish and Alexandra Ogie of this parish. This is the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in your why they may not marry each other, you are from there. I publish the bands of marriage between Dominic Harry Buswell of All Saints Deadwood and Evelyn Marie Potter of All Saints Deadwood. This is the first time of asking. I publish the bands of marriage between Brandon Lewis King Gerald Williams of St. Mary the Virgin Hayes and Tracy Mercy Afrikoma Grikuma of St. Mary the Virgin Hayes. This is the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to be there. Papa, we pray for Thomas and Alexander, for Dominic and for Ethan, for Brandon and for Tracy. May they discover the depths of your kingdom and your love in the midst of their relationship and every day. We make this our prayer through the risen Christ, our Lord. Amen. May I invite you to stand for peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Lord's Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and all the world The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> Praise to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, for whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and went for you a holy people. Therefore, the angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing.
topology of plants. Topology of plants. Topology of plants. Topology of
God is beauty, is beyond our imagining, and whose power we cannot comprehend. <coughs> Show us your glory as far as we can grasp it, and shield us from knowing more than we can bear, until we may look upon you without fear for Jesus Christ, our Saviour, our Almighty God. We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who in the of the people of our souls and bodies to be here in this passion of us, sent us out in the power of your Spirit to live in the world of your grace and glory. Amen. And so, in faith, the size of a mustard seed, may I invite you to stand for our final lesson. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit remain upon you and those whom you love, both in this world and in the life of power. Amen.